Hi, this is Christine from Polyglot Stories. Hi, this is Luca from LucaLaprello.com. Today we're going to answer the question How do you work on your pronunciation? How do you learn the pronunciation of the various languages? First of all, I listen a lot. Like I said, comprehensive input is like super mm -hmm. important. I listen, I listen, I listen, I listen. Listen, listen, listen. I do shadowing, so I repeat a lot of sentences. What, what is shadowing? Let's do a, a live demonstration. So if I say something like Buongiorno, oggi voglio parlare di. So what would you do? Buongiorno, oggi voglio parlare di. So she follows along, right? I speak uh, and she follows along while I speak. Now you repeated it after two seconds, but th that would be like. Yeah. Buongiorno, oggi voglio parlare di. Buongiorno, oggi voglio parlare di. Buongiorno, oggi voglio parlare di. I use books, and by that I mean audiobooks. I love using audiobooks. They are great material for shadowing. I know it can be a bit difficult to find an audiobook in certain languages, and if that's your case, I recommend Audible. Audible has thousands and thousands of audiobooks. In their website, you can find a non-English audiobook section. There are mainly audiobooks in Spanish, Chinese, French, German, Italian, and Portuguese. But you can find some other languages too. You can find a link for a 30-day free trial down below in the description box. Try it and let me know in the comments how much your pronunciation has improved with this technique. And so you listen, you listen to something and then you listen to it multiple times? Yeah. While like, you read it? While I read it. Like, mm -hmm. usually until I understand what's going on. I also do shadowing or just repeat sentences while watching series. Okay. So. Oh. I used to do that too when yeah. I was younger, a little bit younger. I would watch something and I would like repeat sentences. So wait a second, so you watch like a TV drama, I don't know, a Korean TV drama, yeah. and you repeat, well, it's crying over the drama, and you repeat sentences while the action is taking place, or like no, me? No, I pause and oh, then I pause. repeat. Okay, so you pause and you repeat. I, I used to do that, but I, I didn't have the luxury of YouTube, unfortunately, back in the day, I'm a little bit old. So what happened is that I watched the entire movie, and then I just spent 15 minutes kind of imitating the actors after the movie. So you put pause, you repeat, and then after 30 minutes you go back to the TV drama. This is going to last like four hours to watch a TV series. I just do it occasionally, whenever I feel like it. It doesn't have to be all the time, you don't have to cover a whole episode to do it. Just like do it from time to time whenever you feel like it. Oh, I like the way like this actor or this actress speak and I think Pareto principle works here. Right. So even if you do it just a little bit, it, mm -hmm. it, it is effective, right? Yep. Okay, and uh, I also, I imitate, I do imitations. Uh, so what about you? What about me? So the very first thing that I do is I grab this beautiful language learning book, I listen while reading so that I can create a connection between the spoken language and the written language. But one very important thing that I do is that I'm really interested, and I think, Christine, that's the same for you, yeah. really interested in sounds and pronunciation because I think it holds the soul of the language. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, some people say, no, it doesn't matter, pronunciation is not important. But if you speak well, you get into the heart of people. You know, that people's reaction is invaluable. So I'm really, really interested in pronunciation. And a very important piece of advice is that if you're interested, if you want to learn a language and you want to speak it well, make sure that you start paying attention to how the language works phonetically from the very beginning, from the very same second that you start learning a language because that makes a difference. Some people say you have a great ear. I think it's a matter of, of brain. It's a matter of your brain because the ear is just a filter. And the second thing, and it's very important, is that make sure that you get your pronunciation right because if you don't get it right, if you get your patterns wrong, then imagine like this knot and if you and this knot gets really, really tight, then it's really difficult to untie it with time. So all the people I know who speak language as well, they learn the pronunciation of a language from the very beginning and they learn it well. And I've had multiple uh, students who unfortunately, they come to me and they say, look, I want to speak like a native. After 30 years, 10 years or 20 years of speaking the language, that's much more difficult. It's really difficult sure. to untie the knot. And I, I read something very interesting about that. There are studies that show that when you identify to a certain community, mm -hmm. you tend to have a better pronunciation. Yeah. Wait, this is a very interesting point because there's this very famous linguist who goes by the name of, of Steve Krashen who says, oh, uh, you know, that's, yeah. that's a guy. And he says that 
every adult or adult can learn a language well, can learn the pronunciation of any language well. The only problem is that they feel stupid or they feel like they're getting out of their tribe, of their community by speaking a language and with its different uh, sound system. And that's mm, the reason why a lot of people do not acquire languages with a great accent. I think it's more a matter of psychology than techniques, you know, this reduce your accent, do this, do that. I think it's a matter, first and foremost, uh, it's a matter of psychology. I've observed you in the six years that we've known each other, and Christine, she uh, really likes, you know, uh, blending in the environment, you know, just mm -hmm. I've seen it in Korean and German and Italian, you know, when when you were in Italy, for example, you wanted to sound like an Italian, you wanted to speak like an Italian, eat like an Italian, breathe like an Italian. <laughs> and that's what really makes a difference, I think, yeah. at the end of the day. An interesting thing that an Italian friend told me is like, I was speaking to him in Italian and I kept asking him, is it right? Am I sounding like an Italian? He would be like, yeah, your Italian is good. I'm like, no, no, no. Am I speaking like an Italian like girl? Like, and it's like, why are you trying so hard to be Italian? Mm -hmm. You're fine being French. French. And I'm like, I don't know, I want to sound like an Italian when I speak Italian. Mm -hmm. And then he said, is it because maybe when you were a kid, being an Indian born and raised in France, like... FBI, right? <laughs> you wanted to like really integrate and so you have like the strong desire to to be accepted every time i, I learn a yeah. new language maybe this comes from my childhood where you know i tried really hard to be accepted and uh, maybe that's why i'm i don't know i have this obsession for, for working on my pronunciation one other thing is to be able to correct your pronunciation you have to be conscious of the mistakes that you're making yeah sometimes i didn't get the sound right at the beginning but i keep working on it as long as i'm conscious that this is not working i know that i can eventually get it right for arabic i still have to work a lot really right. a lot. i cannot do it the really ein, do. Yeah. I but i couldn't do it and i was like desperate but i, I tried again and again and again mm. and again until i could kind of do it, you know, mm -hmm. and yeah, so, I think that's really important. So you ask feedback, for example, if you have a teacher on, I don't know, Skype, iTalkai, what do you do is you ask them, Of hey. course. Yeah. So I they give you feedback that. of saying, oh, you can pronounce this this way, that way, and then you work on it. Yeah, I listen to some recordings, I try repeating the same thing. I'm kind of trying to think like, does it sound the same or not? When I think it sounds the same, I'm kind of satisfied. But just in case, I also ask a native speaker. And for some sound, I cannot hear the difference, mm -hmm. you know? Oh, yeah. And I just keep like working on that whenever I have the time to work on that. Two things I wanted to add that are really interesting. One is a lot of my students have a hard time listening to themselves because they're not used to the sound of their own voice and my piece of advice is you can get used to anything and I highly suggest that they listen to themselves not only to the language but themselves speaking the language so that they can monitor themselves and possibly they can correct themselves if someone points the mistakes and the second thing is that I can tell you my experience for example with Russian sometimes I cannot hear the difference so there was this sound and I, when I was making YouTube videos people were constantly telling me Luca your ch in Russian is not good and I said oh how can I fix that? And I, mm. I remember I spent 30 minutes saying ch, 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 always the wrong way with a teacher. And I just realized this kind of method was not working of just listening and repeating. And so what I did is someone, I don't remember how, I was looking at this IPA, the system to explain how you put your mouth, etc. And then once this lightning struck because uh, someone told me if you want to make your ch, a little bit lighter, you know, just have to imagine that there's an I. So I used to say cha, which is wrong. In Italian, you have cha. And then he says, try to imagine this ch with an I, like you would say in Italian, cha. So and from that moment on, I kind of understood and I started integrating it in my speech. So instead of saying cha, mm -hmm. I say cha. I totally understand what you mean because it happened to me as well. So it try happens like, to the best of us. <laughs> I spent like half an hour, an hour with a teacher and be like, Okay, is this the sound? Is this or, or a friend? I ask a friend, like, I'm such an annoying friend. Like, is this right? Is this right? No, For no. For the entire not, day, they're not friends anymore. <laughs> you're not, you're not getting it right. And sometimes, so there is someone who explains it to mm -hmm. me and there is like, yeah. And I'm like, okay, I get it. And sometimes that doesn't work. I give up on that, not completely, mm -hmm. just for that day. 
and I realized that it's just I, I need more input. I need to listen more. I shouldn't focus on just that little yeah. sound, but hear the sound of the language globally, you know. Yeah. Improve my listening skills in general can help me improve the pronunciation of that little sound. Yeah, it's great. And sometimes you can also use your sound inventory to figure out how certain sounds are produced. You already have them in you, but you just have to discover how. Just let me give an example. She doesn't speak Danish. Have you ever heard this uh sound? I'm not a master, mind you, but I can show you. We can give a, a, a like a demonstration of how this works. For example, this is, means already, written. Try to say it's good. It, it, it's okay. The problem is a lot of sounds in Danish are produced inside the mouth and they keep their mouth shut so you cannot see what happens. But I watched a YouTube video. So after listening to Danish and listening to Danish and I thought, okay, I'll listen and listen and listen and then it's gonna happen. Unfortunately, it doesn't happen that way. So what I did is this. I was looking for this soft D, it's called in Danish, and all of a sudden, this guy told me, in order to produce the sound, you have to put your fingers on the, because when we pronounce the L, try to say L. L. Your mouth goes up, right? L. 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 But this guy said, try to produce the same sound, but you have to keep your tongue down. L. L. Yeah, oh. Oh, and then you have to do something with your with your throat, but that's a different thing. So, <laughs> if, so what he did, literally, if you can see it on YouTube, he put his fingers and he kept his mouth down to produce the sound, and then I got it. I went, okay, I'll, uh, after two months of listening to Danish, I finally got it. So listening is great, but you should try multiple uh, ways of attacking the sound if you exactly have. Exactly. When you get it. Yeah, the world gets better. I think that works for many aspects of language learning, attacking it from different sides. Like a castle. You have to try and try and try because language learning is a long road. Exactly. But if you love it, you're gonna make it. So that's it for pronunciation. That's it, this is it. This is the end of the video. Don't watch it anymore. <laughs> Don't forget to check out Luca's channel. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and his channel. See you next time. Ciao.